There you are. <laughs> when I became a beekeeper, I followed all the steps. Step one, take beekeeping classes. Step two, order my honeybees off the internet. Step three, set up my equipment and buy this lovely bee suit. <laughs> Step four, pick up a low humming package from an obviously nervous post office employee. <laughs> I brought my package home and I began to install my very first backyard hive. Honeybees are a super organism, which means they are a collective decision maker. Each bee behaves like a cell in the body. A bunch of bees with the same job behave like an organ in the body. And the entire hive can be considered a being. <laughs> I carefully removed the queen in her queen cage, and I held her in the palm of my hand. The queen is a stone-cold champion. When worker bees make a queen, they don't just make one, they make five, 10, 15 at a time by bathing larvae and royal jelly. The first queen to em emerge makes a tooting noise, toot, toot, toot announcing, I'm coming out, and I'm going to get you. <laughs> she then goes through the hive and systematically assassinates every other queen by stinging them to death. And to celebrate, she goes on her victorious mating flight. <laughs> the drones are the hunky boy bees of the hive. They've got large, dreamy eyes, <laughs> big, strong muscles, and like some boys we know, they spend the spring and the summer cruising the Strip looking for hot chicks. <laughs> the Strip is an area high above our heads called the Drone Congregation Area. And when a drone sees a virgin queen, he'll zoom over, mate with her, and in a cruel twist of fate, his genitalia will explode from his body <laughs> and he will fall to the ground in a death spiral. <laughs> of ecstasy. <laughs> I'm not making this up. <laughs> <laughs> the queen bee will return to the hive after mating with 10 or more drones, and she will begin laying eggs. Most of those eggs will develop into infertile female bees. These are the worker bees, and there can be up to 60,000 in the heart of summer in a hive. Like her name says, the moment that she emerges, she chews open her cocoon, and she begins to scrub her cell. She then goes on to other jobs in the hive, like caring for the brood, caring for the queen and the drones who don't do anything for themselves, <laughs> cooling the hive, heating the hive, pulling beeswax comb off their abdomens and building the honeycomb, guarding the hive. The list of jobs goes on and on. But her last job is her most important job, and that is when she leaves the hive in search of food. When she does this, she goes out, lands on a flower, and while she's there, she will suck up nectar through her straw-like proboscis into her honey stomach. Or she will grab handfuls of pollen and stuff her pollen sacs, big long hairs in her back legs. While she's on that flower, some of the pollen will stick to her fur through electromagnetic charge. She will then zoom over to the next flower, and while she's there, that pollen will slough off. This is called pollination, and where we get many of our fruits and our vegetables, and why we so desperately need our honeybees. I watched my hive develop through that year, 
I watched the worker bees bring in nectar and begin to turn it into glistening honey, and I could not wait for my very first honey harvest. One summer day, I went out to my hive, and, and they were dead. The, uh, the queen was dead, the drones were dead, and my workers lay sick and twitching. It was heartbreaking. And it was at this moment that I actually took the time and looked up and out of the hive and into the world around me. And you know what I saw? I didn't, ha I didn't see a single nectar-bearing plant in my entire backyard. It was a desert wasteland. And in the alleyway behind my yard, where there should have been lush, blooming weeds, <laughs> they were yellow and dead, as though they had been sprayed with something that I suspect poisoned my hive. It was time for a change. I now have beautiful gardens that are in constant bloom. And I don't just see honeybees, I see big fat bumblebees and little wasps that zoom all around and moths and butterflies and insects I couldn't even begin to identify. And I also see the predators to my insects, like birds that will swoop down and gobble them up. And I also see the predators to my predators, like a hawk circling high above. Turns out beekeeping is a great conversation starter with nosy neighbors. <laughs> we, we chat over the fence about how many more apples their tree has produced since the bees moved into the neighborhood. The latest in honeybee news, and whether or not they can trade some of their heirloom tomatoes for some of my purple sage honey. My beekeeping community grew as I joined local beekeeping organizations so I could learn how to better care for my hives that outgrew my backyard and into a small business. Through these organizations, we are doing amazing work. Right here in New Mexico, we created a beekeeping school whose graduates each have to volunteer 40 hours in the community, catching swarms, teaching about the importance of our honeybees and plantings to schools, and removing bees that have moved into people's homes. We have begun working with city officials to create resolutions to bring awareness, protection, and celebration to our pollinators. And we have joined up with na other national organizations so that we could keep better in touch with those doing research on honeybee and pollinator issues nationally and internationally. And now I find myself on several of these national board of directors and involved with the New Mexico Beekeeping Association. This has been my journey. I invite you to take your own journey into beekeeping. Why not? I would totally recommend it for anybody, but go into it with your eyes wide open to the world around you. All you need is a willingness to learn, a curiosity, and an acceptance of challenges. And if beekeeping isn't your cup of tea, I get it, <laughs> consider the following steps. Step one, plant flowers. You can do it when you get home. Your name tag has flower seeds in it. Take it home and start watering it. Step two, don't poison those flowers with insect-killing pesticides. Step three, welcome the buzz into your life. <laughs>